it's a film studio. And the film studio, they've got, um, you've got the you know, lights, camera, action. You, you've got sets, props, actors, which in this case are puppets, cameras. Um, but because of the way we work, I can have um, 20 pirate captains performing at the same time. So on any one day, 20 different animators are all making him, well, I won't say move, because that's not right, making him perform. And um, so 20 different animators all working on, this, on the pirate captain. So it's a film studio, but we have within, under that big um, warehouse roof, we have... Uh, 40 different mini studios and in each mini studio somebody is animating the pirate captain so. and because he obviously is throughout the film you, know, you have to have lots of different pirate captains and they have to be identical yes absolutely yeah yeah except that when, whenever he gets changed when he puts on his girl guide outfit or when he puts <laughs> on his um his underwear uh it's actually a different it's a different puppet because you because this coat doesn't come off. Right. He, he, he's built into that coat. So if he wants to change costume, I have to rebuild him, basically. Or, or the model makers have to rebuild him. So, and, and, and you've got another one as well, have oh, you? Oh, one more here. Ah, uh, yes. A lot of people have been making... Uh, yes, I've today. seen some very impressive polys being made out there. Come on, come on. Yes, bless her. <laughs> See how she's huge? He's... So tiny and so um, cute. They're so intricate, aren't they? They're so beautifully made. They're really elaborate. I, I mean, and is there a kind of, there's an, there's an armature underneath? There is. is. Right? I have that here as well. I've got all the... Inside the pirate captain, there's a skeleton like this, like a Terminator. <laughs> so uh, so that's, a, that's a steel skeleton. Uh, um, and like, like a human skeleton, he's got, you know, he's got... He's got He's got his shoulders, and he's got his, his elbow, and his wrist, and his hip, and his knee. Um, uh, and the whole point about the way that that's, this skeleton's made is that he, he goes where you put him, and then he stays there. And that's, what, that's what we require. So that, you can see that's a, very, that's a very particular, highly evolved piece of engineering, that. Every single character will have one of those in it. Yeah, everyone, yes. Mr. Bobo's got one. Polly's got a very simple one. And then he's made of... Uh, his parts are made of uh, latex and silicon and resin and a little bit of plasticine. Um, and he's... In fact, his, his hands are one part. His uh, lace cuffs are one part. This cuff is another part. The coat is another part. The boots... He, he's made of about... In total, about a uh, hundred different elements. And in these different studios, you've got different animation experts, different animators who are all working on their own individual scene. Yes. And that has been how? I mean, how, what are they working? Are they working on a storyboard, or are they working on something that's been visually created for them? How, how how does that work in terms of your vision being extended to them? Yeah. So, so the story the storyboard has been has been done by uh, a small team of story artists, not too many. And the storyboard tells the animator what happens in every shot. Um, and when I say a shot, you know, obviously a film is, a film is composed of many, many different shots. Uh, the longest ones might be 25 seconds long. The shortest ones might be half a second long. Um, and the animator's job is to do the performance in that shot. And people are always interested. I don't... I don't like to um, I don't like to exaggerate the suffering of animation because mostly it's fun, but like they, a good animator does might maybe um, uh, two seconds a day. That's a, that's a good day, or, or in fact, um, so two seconds a day. Two so, seconds a day. So, so, so two seconds of what we see on screen. Yeah. takes a whole day. A whole film. day. Yes. Yes. Or or maybe more for one animator. Um, so you know it's it's very very per perfect. If you get, and if you get a shot, a long shot like you won't remember, but right at the start of the film when they come into the the town, they come into Blood Island, and as they walk they walk along the quayside, and as they walk along, the camera slowly rises up on the crane and looks down. And that's 
that's you've got like six characters walking and other passers by and and that that shot which is 25 seconds long that took somebody you know three weeks so it's that's some sense of the scale of it and in terms of obviously it, it's a very laborious thing to do and you've got the artists who are manipulating the yes. different public but but the, you are also using computers at certain points in the, in, in the production, aren't you? Yes, in various ways. I mean, ev ev you know, everything in life now has computers attached to it these days, so the, the image is recorded on the computer. Uh, if the camera moves, like I was saying, the, the camera rises up during the shot, well, that's a, that's a great big mechanical crane, and that, that motion is computerised, so it happens in tiny increments. Uh, and then the sea... Um, isn't uh, isn't there at all? There is no sea. The the sea is all generated in the, in the computer. The the skies are all generated in the computer. So um, and then it's all assembled afterwards. So we put together the puppets and the computer sea. Uh, so it's it's a it's a to me I would say you know I've got I've brought these guys along. Then you can see they're real. Most of the film, in my opinion, is. Um, Handcraft. It's 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 things done by artists by hand. That's that's the that's what I love best. Um, I I love the fact that we can then make it look make the world look bigger by putting in the sea and stuff like that. But I, I really think of it as a, as a as a handmade film. And just going way back to the very very start, because yeah. it's a very fine book by Gideon Defoe. Yes. At what point did you realise this was going to be the next project? I read the book. It came. It was on the table in a meeting. We have we have regular meetings about um, what's going to be the next big project. This book was lying on the table. I picked it up idly uh, during the meeting. During the meeting, interesting you know, meeting. Yeah, very very interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Picked it up idly, you know, and started to read it and laughed out loud repeatedly, just at, at the way it was written. I, uh, I immediately thought, wow, this is special. This is something really special. Um, and uh, and eventually persuaded Sony that it was a good idea. Uh, um, I'm very happy. Yeah, it was crazy. And Gideon, who wrote the book, also wrote the screenplay. He wrote as well. the screenplay, which is unusual because he'd, no, he'd never written a screenplay before. So it was quite impressive, always around. He's, he's brilliant, brilliant and one, guy. And once he delivered the screenplay to you, how involved was he from that point on? Or was that the point where he then kind of passed it over to you and you're then completely in control? No, in, in our world, for some reason, I don't. Rightly or wrongly, the writers tend to get involved for a long time. So Gideon was the, Gideon was still writing um, odd words right at the end of the production because because you do t the scripts evolve for different reasons. One is normally the script is too long to start with. That always happens. So Gideon's job was to make it quicker, uh, and maybe the meaning of a scene might slightly change as you're working on it. So you need you need constant you know chit little mini changes. And in terms of your approach to the voice cast, because obviously it's a very impressive voice cast, I don't think Hugh Grant has voiced a character, animated character before. No, no, no so first. I, um, I, and I know that you obviously you, you, you wanted to match up properly the voice. So you, you, you have the characters in blind, and then you actually decided to work on which characters to, um, voices to bring in. How did you go about getting in the voice cast? It's, I mean, you, you, two things. One is, one is you, you obviously you think about the people you want to like because you because you've seen them before. Uh, and um, and we, did, we did do some um, auditioning as well, which, are, which is fun to do, you know. So, so some of the characters, like, you know, I mean, to be honest, though, now I think about it, almost all the characters were kind of pretty well the first choices, actually. Pretty well, but You've still, David Tennant's in there. And and David Tennant's just marvellous, just perfect, you know. And, and is there a point where the voices are recorded in tandem, or are they always so? So, so does one actor come in, they record their bit, or are they all kind of sitting in a group, all recording their different moments? How does that work? Uh, well, in practice, they tend to be done separately. It's a shame. I, I think it's a shame, actually, having said it. You know, you have to record the voice first. Um, you know what the words are, of course, first. And, and in the first run-through, we, um, uh, we use stand-in actors uh, just, just, to get, just to see the shape of the film. 
So they know the, the words are the right words, um, but then you have to record them all. And then because all the visual performance that you see is completely based on what the actor's done, I, I say this to, enc to encourage the actors, I say, um, because the way the captain moves, the gestures he makes with his hands and his head and his body are all based on the rhythm of Hugh Grant's speech. So, you, so he records a speech, then we analyse it very, very carefully to hear exactly what he says, and then we animate to match the speech. Uh, but it would be great to get actors together, like a real, like a real yeah. movie, like a real play, but um, partly economics, it doesn't happen very often. It's very rare. It's I, very I, I rare. I think Rango did it, I think. And yeah, and they, on uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox they did it as well, but, but no, we didn't. So I get Hugh Grant... And he did one session with David Tennant, and he did one session with Imelda Staunton, but only only one. In terms of obviously stop motion animation, because I mean, there's been a real focus recently on, on computer generators being the as being the, the, the big thing. But actually, yeah. there have been three quite major stop motion projects over the last twelve months. Yes, we've had yes. obviously pirates kind of leading the way. Yeah, we've got um, Paranorman, which opens next week, which, which we're showing here on Friday on Wednesday night. Yeah. Um, and then there's also obviously Tim Burton's Frankenweenie coming yeah, up. Yeah. Um, are you all kind of competing with the same for the same animators, or how, how does that work? There's a bit of exchange because there, there aren't that many animators in the world. It's in the world, you know, it's um, a very specialist craft activity, um, and there aren't many really good ones. So we do, we share in quite a nice way. There's a, there's a there's a travelling group of them uh, that that go around the world. Um, so I would, on the Pirates, I had people that had worked on um, Coraline, that had worked on Fantastic Mr. Fox, that worked on Chicken Run. Um, so there's, it's, it's, a, it's a small and much, much prized international community. Apparently when, uh, we can confirm this is true, apparently when people come to Ardman to be auditioned to work as an animator... Yeah. Uh, you set them a very special task, is that right? Yes, that's true. They have to, they have to animate Morph, and uh, some, some of you will know Morph, and some will nev have never seen him before, but uh, Morph is he's only like this big, and he's made a solid plasticine, and it's, um, I just do it to make the animators sweat, actually, because, <laughs> um, because he's so simple. What, what can be simpler? You know, this, this guy... So they have to make him? They have to make him from scratch? Well, or? No, I can, I'll give him one. I'll give okay, him one. Okay, give him one more. But it's, it's, it's so simple, but really, really difficult because he's so simple. And so it's a, it's a good challenge for him, yeah.